All right. Hello and happy, happy Tuesday. My name is Wendy Lee from creativelyyours.com. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. and super happy, that, happy, happy and crafty. Hmm. Super happy that you're joining me today. So I've got one, actually, I've got one card to show you. I've got four cards to show you, but we're going to make one of them. So I have a, what I think is super cute, fun fold card that we're going to do. It's a fast and easy fun fold. Um, and I just love it. So I'm going to give you a quick flash. And then I will show you more once we move the camera over. Yes. Have you guys made your Valentines already? If not, I've got some good ones for you. All right. I'm going to switch the camera over and we're going to get a little bit of crafting done today. All right. So I'm featuring products from the Sweet Talk um, suite. And so we've got the Sweet Talk Designer Series paper, the Sweet Conversation stamp set, and then coordinating um, Sweethearts dies. Been playing a lot with this product suite and I love it. Um, I think it could be so much more than Valentine, but I, I especially get excited about these little conversation hearts, but it is a super cute, cute stamp set. And if you've not made your Valentine's yet, I've got some cute ones for you. And of course you could change them up and do something different if you'd like to. But this is the one we're gonna to create today and it's a fun fold, but a super simple fun fold where this just is cut away in the front and opens up like that. And I left plenty of space to be able to write a note on the inside, right? Now this was one of four cards that was in um, a fun fold card class that I had. Um, this was not one I offered kits on. Um, I do have the tutorial um, available for purchase now, but this is a card class that I did special just for those that participated in my 10 at 100 event back in December. So this is the card class. They got the tutorial with the card kits in the mail for free as part of them uh, participating in the event. So you can now purchase this tutorial if you choose to, but we're going to do this one together today. Let me go ahead and show you the other three that we've got. So here's another one. And this is a fun fold that opens like that. Cute, right? And then the third one is this one, super simple. And it's a gift card holder. So we've got a little pocket here on the side. And then the fourth one is another super cute one. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So some easy cards that you could create. You could change the sentiments and the paper and use them for all kinds of occasions. So I'm so glad that you guys are jumping in and joining me. You found me. I got Susan and Terry, Jean and Jennifer. Yay. All right. Good, good, good. Let's go ahead and get started with this. I'm going to start off and pull in my Simply Scored because I just find this so much easier to do versus using my paper trimmer when I have multiple score lines. You don't have to do this. You can definitely use your paper trimmer. But I'm going to bring in my Blushing Bride cardstock. And this is four and a quarter by nine and a half. Now I will put, um, after the video is over, I will go back in and put the complete supply list and cut dimensions in the video description. So you'll have to do probably the show more to um, have that display, all right? So I'm scoring this at two inches. So I like to put my marker there. I'm gonna rotate it and score it at two inches again. Now, could I have just come and marked uh, another mark down here at the seven and a half that would be two inches in? Sure. I just, when I'm doing this on opposite sides and I wanna make sure they're even, I just like to rotate it. So you can go either way makes no difference. Okay, now let me grab my bone folder, one of my handy dandy tools that I use all the time. Do you guys have a bone folder? Do you use it? So helpful. My fingers sometimes don't work so well with my arthritis and this helps a lot. Okay, so that's gonna give me a nice, nice crisp edge. Hey Mary, so glad you're here today. And then I'm going to pull in a piece of basic white. This is four and a quarter by five and no, four by five and a quarter. See, this is why I shouldn't try to say measurements while I'm doing this. You're safer to uh, listen after to the video, <laughs> right? And look in the description. We are going to pull in our real red ink pad and our little love you stamp. And I'm just going to put it right here in the center and I'm putting it kind of up high. Um, you can put it down lower if you'd like. You just have to watch placement since this is a cut open front that wherever you place it, it's going to be covered by your tags, right? All right, let's go ahead and adhere this inside our card base as well. 
So using another one of my favorite tools, I guess you could call it adhesive. Does, is, does adhesive count as a tool? I think it might. I'm gonna count it as a tool. All right, so I'm centering that more or less. So that's gonna be the inside of my card. Cute. Now you could decorate these flaps as well. I think that would be fun if you wanted to bring in another piece of designer series paper. All right, let's grab some cardstock and designer series paper strips. All right, so on the original one, I used this side of the paper. Should we flip it? Yep, let's flip it and change it up. Why not? Make it look just slightly different. And you'll see two different versions. All right, so go ahead and lay this right down on our Highland Heather cardstock. And I've done, you know, I like the narrow borders, you know. Was it Susan that said a few weeks ago that that's my thing? <laughs> it is definitely my thing. I love the narrow borders. I think they just give a, a different look to them, right? More petite. I don't know. All right, let's go ahead and adhere this. I know I'm going to do it flat. You're going to be shocked. <laughs> so I'm just going to go flat on each of these panels. Now here I've got the eighth inch border around. So it just adds a really nice touch when you vary those widths versus making them all the same width here. But isn't that nice? That, that little skinny purple just frames it really well. And then I've got the one eighth inch border around the rest of it. So I'll repeat that at the top. Now, if you wanted to add a little more finish to the inside, we could have put another piece of cardstock in here, but I've got a lot going on with this. So um, I didn't want to go too, too crazy. All right, so those are on. That's going to be cute, I think. Yes. And see, I had my stamped image up high enough that it doesn't matter where my tag is. But again, you could place it lower. You just need to make sure your tag covers it. If you don't want it to show on the front, you might want yours to show on the front. You get to choose that. All right, next, I'm bringing in the tailor made tags dies. Now, I've already die cut. I use this image right here. Die cutting for me is another one of my what I consider basic tools. I, you know, before we had a die cutting machine, I can't even imagine what I used because I, it's my go-to. Like every time I make a card, I, I pull out the die cut and emboss machine and some dies or some embossing folders, whatever. So I cut one out of Highland Heather and one out of basic white. And then I have these, I left it in the die. So I have some real red uh, scrap of cardstock and I cut out, whoa cut out some of these hole reinforcers. Now I put adhesive sheet on the back of this before I die cut it, just to make it super simple to adhere this to my card. Now you could use liquid glue if you prefer, it's entirely up to you, but I just thought this would be faster and a little bit easier, so I've done that. All right, put that away, we'll pull this in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this little reinforcer on my tag here. Let's get the backing paper off. And I think when I tried to do that the other day, I did not have luck getting that off, right? I struggled. All right, cute, fast and easy. And then I want to adhere these two tags together. And I'm gonna have them offset because I want to be able to see the purple underneath here, right? Uh, punches, yeah, punches were definitely a big thing for sure. Yeah, punch art was great. Granted, we don't we don't have as many punches as we did. We still have some really good ones. They're bringing more more back. The ladybug, the turtle, there's a few. Um, and then I know this is weird, but I'm gonna put this one over here. So I want this to be nice and stable. Um, so I put a couple on this side because I knew that's the side that's going to overlap. And then I just stuck one way out here because I know it's going to be behind the white tag, but it will give me some stability on that side there. So before I let them touch, I'm going to line up these holes, kind of offset them where I want them, and then I can give them a little push. Cute. It's cute. Cute, cute, cute. All right. So I want to adhere this just to the top of my card here. Now I'm gonna do this flat as well. And I'm gonna show you a trick that I do. I don't know if you do it this way, but I'm gonna run my adhesive across the top of my tag. And then I'm just gonna kind of use this as a guide. And I'm gonna put the other little bit of adhesive. I'm gonna go a little bit narrower than my tag 
but I'll put it at the bottom of this flap. Instead of trying to guess here where, where I need some more to keep it nice and sturdy, um, that just kind of helps me out. So I don't know if you guys do that, if you like that, if you don't like that. And I can just give that a little push. And so that is going to be the front of my card. Cute. Now we just need to decorate it. Super easy. All right, let's bring in a little bit of this faux linen real red ribbon. I'm gonna go ahead and tie a bow. I like to do my two loops. You could cut it off the spool, but I like to leave it on the spool. Got my two loops that come around. My bow's not so pretty, but I can hold that knot and pull these ends. We've done this many times. And tighten that and continue doing that until I get the bow the size I want and I'm happy with the appearance of it, right? I like baby bows. This ribbon won't go too small but I can get a little bit small. Still cute. It's a little bit chunky of a ribbon. Not hard to work with, but not as um, soft as some of the others. I mean, it's soft, not having a good day describing things. All right, let's grab a little glue dot off of our sheet here. And we're gonna go ahead and glue dot that there. Now I could have tied it around the layer, but I didn't want the bulk of the ribbon underneath and it saves a little ribbon to do it this way. So I don't have to worry about that. Okay, great. Now this is driving me nuts. See, this one's staying closed really well. This one is wanting to flap open. So I'm just gonna run this bone folder another time across that and see if I can get a little crisper of a crease. It may be one of those things. Oh yeah, that helped. It may be one of those things that sometimes you just have to put a book on the card for a little bit, flatten it out, right? <laughs> All right, let's bring in our dies again. There they are. So the Sweetheart dies, this one right here makes a super cute little baby envelope. And it's a little hard to set to see, but there's three flaps that are the same. And then there's one that's a little bit um, smaller. And so I use that one as the one that's the top you know, which one of these things is not like the other is how I'm looking at it. So we're gonna pull that out. Let me go ahead and give this a good crease on each of these folds as well. Envelope stays closed. And I'm not gonna fold the top one down. So I'm gonna use a little bit of liquid glue. Just pull that over and fold that up. And I'm just going to hold that there for just a moment. Dun, dun, dun. It'll be done in just a minute. Well, I don't have the patience. Isn't that terrible? Now you can use um, your seal or you can use liquid glue, whatever makes you happy. And I'm just going to tuck this little envelope right on there. This will give me an opportunity to hold that point again. Just hold that for a second. And great, so that's on there. And then we're going to get a couple of hearts out of our designer paper. So you can fussy cut these out with your snips if you've got the dies. I actually die cut them with a couple of the hearts in the dies. Let me pull those in so you can see them. So this larger one fits pretty good. They're not exact, but I think they're fun. And then you've got this die is gonna fit these more um, skinny, longer ones. And then this little die here fits these little shorter, fatter ones. Yes, cute, love that. So I've been spending a lot of time cutting out little hearts because I love them. All right, let's go ahead and get this down. if I can get a hold of it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of dimensionals on the back of this heart and pop that up and I'm gonna put them up here because that bottom part's gonna just tuck down right inside that little envelope there. And I'm gonna angle it a little bit. I think that's cute, right? And then this one right here, I'm gonna um, pop up on top of that. Now, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I want a little more dimensions. I'm gonna add another height to it. So on this side, the side that's gonna overlap the purple heart, I'm gonna go ahead and put one dimensional. 
Now on the other side, that's going to hang off because that'll make me crazy. I'm going to put it to two, two dimensionals. I'm going to double stack them. That way my height should sit level based on where I'm putting it since this one's popped up, right? And let's see if we can angle that a little bit. Cute. Now, do you have to pop those up like that? No, you don't. It would be cute without it, but I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, let's pull in some elegant faceted gems. And these have three finishes. Um, I'm not going to use the petal pink. You can see the petal pink is not my favorite. I actually spend, you, when I use these, I typically color them black. Isn't that funny? Um, and then you've got the clear ones, and then we've got these shimmery ones. So let's use the shimmery ones. Just add a little, little sparkle to our card here. And we'll just plop on a couple of those. Sprinkle, does that sound nicer? Put a sprinkle on. Let's do that. And let's add another one, and we'll put that. Let's put this one over here, changing it up a little. There's not a right and wrong. All right. Cute, do you guys like it? So there's the two versions, just changing the paper changes the look of it a little bit. You could change your colors and your layers. There's lots of really um, great colors in this designer paper. Let me bring it back in so you can see, All right? So there's really good coordinating colors with real red, blushing pride, grainy apple green, highland heather, petal pink, pool party, and so saffron. And of course, you can bring in other colors. Gorgeous grape layers nicely with this as well. I've done that several times. Um, so, you know, you kind of do what makes you happy, right? But I love using the designer paper to pull colors from it. It makes it really easy. You don't have to second guess it. So, all right. So I hope you guys love this. Again, I will have a link to this tutorial that will have the PDF for this project here. It's going to be the sample. And then uh, the other three cards are in there as well. So if you are interested in purchasing that, you can. If not, no worries, right? And I hope you enjoyed this one and we'll give it a try, all right? Thank you guys so much. And I will see you again next Tuesday for a little more paper crafting fun. Bye for now.